Hello Arts 102, welcome to the Emphasis Unit. In this unit we're going to learn how to call stuff out, how to draw the viewer's attention in. So let's take a look at this. Emphasis is uh, uh, in an overall concept is a tool that just directs viewer attention. It attracts the viewer's eye to one or more elements which we refer to as focal points. So in this composition here um, you can very easily see where your eye is supposed to be drawn and um, it's pretty obvious when you're looking at an example like this so if you just uh, you know think about why your eye is being drawn there um, there's a number of reasons for it one is because the rest of the uh, photo is ghosted out and it's a little bit out of focus and a little bit um, vignetted and of course the image that you're supposed to be looking at is in color versus the rest of the photo which is black and white so you've got a number of factors that are drawing your eye towards the center there. So how do we emphasize? How do we get it to stand out? Let's see here. Well, it's a game of one of these things is not like the other. Yeah, there you go. So we're playing a game of one of these things is not like the other. Um, oops. You're looking at the different methods of emphasis here. Um, basically, you're trying to change something in a way that it contrasts or sticks out. So the ways you can do it are, are with these methods, isolation and placement, size and weight, and all of these rely on contrast. So um, if everything is heavyweight in the composition then nothing at all is emphasized it has to be in contrast to things that are lightweight simplicity versus complexity same idea if everything in the composition is complex then nothing is emphasized if everything is simple forms and there's one complex then the complex form is emphasized form direction contrast directional lines including a character pointing or looking that one really works like magic. Um, the content or subject matter itself can be emphasized and you can emphasize through color. You read that bullet first, didn't you? Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. So complexity versus simplicity, let's just go through a couple of visual examples here. You can you can see the ideas, um, you can see kind of where the eye is intended to go. Um, also the lighting and, and a number of other factors are contributing to where your eye is supposed to be on this one. Isolation, pretty clear example, pretty good idea of where the focal point is on this one. Color, this is again when when contrasted with non-color, so <clears throat> it's the only way it works. Contrast, um, these are all kind of contrast, but this is specifically contrast of value, light versus dark. Um, the one obviously is meant to stick out. The emphasis is on the content or subject matter. It's a little harder to pin down, but basically it's not necessarily any particular emphasis, just that you're emphasizing the message itself. Um, just kind of, you've got an idea that you want to get across and the composition just reinforces the um, the content matter, the subject matter or content. Economy is um, kind of a good tool to use. It's just basically doing the least amount of work. Less is more. That's economy. Distilling an image down to its essentials to help direct the eye to the viewer to the focal point there. So as little work as possible basically. You can get an image out of um, very minimal um, marks. I'm not saying that's the only right way to do it, but that's a tool. Scale and viewer placement is very important. You've got um, different ways to place the viewer and that can really end up making a, a real big impact on the composition. Scalar proportion is the size of the elements 
relative to one another, usually in comparison to the size of a human being. Most of the time when we're talking about art concepts, we're comparing it to human being, uh, the form of a human being, or the size of a human being, or humanity in general. Um, it may be subconsciously, but basically we kind of do that. We're a little bit of a self-centered species. View replacement is done by manipulating the camera angle, um, whether that means the literal camera angle with an actual camera or the figurative camera angle from if you're drawing a scene or making a 3D rendering. So if you've got a um, different camera angles kind of evoke different emotions. Placing the viewer directs the message. It alters the feel of the composition. Um, according to how things are scaled. Remember the camera, figurative or literal, is a stand-in for the viewer's eye. And this might sound like kind of a dumb moment, but pointing a camera or painting a picture is saying, hey, look at this. I don't know, that was something that an instructor told me when I was learning about photography and that kind of stuck with me. It made my photography a lot better. I don't know if those are your magic words. Maybe they are, maybe they're not, but that really helped me out. When you point a camera at something or you put something on the page, you're saying, hey, look at this. It's important. So, Motion. Alright, there's two kinds of motion and the difference between the two is subtle. And you're gonna you're gonna want to try to get both of these. Uh, the implied motion or the implication of motion that's created through character poses and line direction. It depends on how things are placed and basically from what we know about physics the the objects or characters that you see cannot hold that pose or that placement. It's impossible they have to be in motion. The illusion of motion is created from motion blur. So there are two different things. There's implied motion and there's the illusion of motion. And then if the artwork itself was designed to move, such as a mobile, it's referred to as kinetic art. So, a couple of visual examples for an implied versus illusion, illusory motion. So, implied motion on the left here is in the pose and the placement of the objects. That character cannot possibly hold that pose. They must be in motion. They have to be. And then the illusion of motion is created on the right there from the motion blur again. And here's another example of motion blur, just a long exposure on um, South Lakeshore Drive in Chicago. You can see the headlights coming through and gives you a very strong sense of motion. Space. Um, we're going to talk about space in uh, this unit and beyond. There's positive space, which is the area occupied by an element, or you might call it the foreground or uh, the figure. Negative space is the unoccupied or empty area left after the positive elements have been created or placed by the designer. Space often misunderstood, rarely effectively used by noobs. Effective methods of creating emphasis is through the manipulation of ne negative space. I think I worded that wrong. <laughs> Effective methods of creating emphasis through manipulation of negative space are among your most, most powerful tools. And don't think that empty space is just wasted space. That's a very common attitude and that is a trap. It's misguided. Try to shed that attitude.